Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 1, Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number two where we look at the start of our comparison or our contrast between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Here what we want to do is to start to look at some different examples of the different types of organisms and see if we can start to put them into some sort of categories. So the first question and the most important question for us to ask at the cellular level is how do we distinguish between different types of cells? How do we determine whether a cell that we're looking at is an entire organism or whether it is just part of a larger organism? One of the ways of doing that is to look at the actual organization of the cell itself, particularly the cell components. What do we see inside the cell? And does that tell us anything about the nature of the organism that we're looking at? Well, the most important place to start is with prokaryotics. These are the simplest forms of life. Prokaryotic Prokaryotic organisms, as well as being the simplest form of life, are also the most abundant. So we have a huge number of prokaryotic cells on our planet uh, in all sorts of different environments, um, from inside other organisms to uh, in the very warm places, in places where it's very cold, extremes. And there are uh, a number of examples of, of uh, organisms, of prokaryotic organisms that can live in some very, very harsh environments. And we'll have a look at some more of those as we go along. Eukaryotic uh, organisms are the more complex cells and they make up the uh, wide diversity of life that we see, certainly the... Um, the different types of organisms that are visible to the naked eye, pretty much all of those are eukaryotic. Uh, we need microscopes if we're going to look at prokaryotic organisms. Um, so we also belong to that group of eukaryotic organisms. Uh, so you can see from the family tree here a little bit of an idea of how each of these different groups has developed over time. So you can see that we've split our prokaryotic organisms into two important groups the bacterial group and the archaea. And these are ones we'll go into a little bit more detail further into this course. Bacteria are the ones we're probably um, more familiar with in the sense that sometimes when we get sick with bacterial infections, they're the ones that are responsible for that. Um, and this, they, they come in, in a variety of different types. They, are, they can be spiral, they can be rod-like, they can be... Um, uh, spherical. The most important thing to say about all of these different types of prokaryotic organisms and the thing that kind of distinguishes the two groups from one another is the lack. So prokaryotes, and you will see this spelt with a C instead of a K as well, prokaryotes lack membrane bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus, a membrane-bound structure which contains other structures within it, but prokaryotic organisms do not contain these membrane-bound organelles. And the nucleus is just one example, there's quite a number of different examples. That's not to say that we don't find certain structures inside of prokaryotic cells, bacteria or the archaea. Each of these are... Um, different types of prokaryotic cells and we do find certain structures within them. We just don't find these membrane bound structures like we do in eukaryotes. At this point in time you can see that our uh, discussion of eukaryotes uh, is a very very broad one. It's going to be a big group to look at from slime molds to single cell protozoans to fungi, plants and animals which is a very, very big and diverse uh, number of different groups of organisms to look at. So they will require a lot more time, which we'll give to them a little bit later in this course. Um, but for this particular one, we're going to focus in just a little bit more on the prokaryotic cells. So here's a nice simple example of a prokaryotic cell. You can see from this cell that we sometimes have a sort of external um, protective structure, a capsule that sits around the outside of the um, cell. Most prokaryotic cells do have a cell wall. It's just an extra little um, 
rigidity that protects helps to protect the internal contents um, but there is also a cell membrane or plasma membrane that just is like a the balloon uh, if you like around the cell that just holds the contents inside Inside all cells are cytoplasm, so this plasma membrane and cytoplasm are common to pretty much all different types of cells. You have a container and you have a liquid-filled um, substance within the container. And so that's the plasma membrane is the container and the cytoplasm is the liquid-filled substance within. Because there's different types of things that are present within the cytoplasm, we can have a look at some examples of those. And because sometimes the um, bag or the container requires some additional rigidity or protection, then sometimes we find other structures sitting outside of the plasma uh, membrane. You can see a couple of important things here. Firstly, you can see that there is a nucleoid or circular DNA. Um, that structure is not um, bound up within a nucleus, which is where we would expect it to be if it was a eukaryotic cell like, like our own cells. Our DNA is bound within the nucleus of our cells. This um, tends to be a little bit more uh, disorganized, it doesn't have the same level of organization as uh, a, a eukaryotic cell. There are, however, ribosomes uh, present. Ribosomes are the place where protein synthesis occurs. So this is where the cell makes the very important proteins, uh, including enzymes, and we'll have a look at those uh, in a little bit more detail later on, but substances that are really important to the processes of life. Uh, these need to be made within the cell. The ribosome is the place where um, protein manufacture occurs, and we find those in prokaryotic cells. We also find plasmids. Plasmids have been really, really useful to us. They're also little, often circular DNA. These have been very important in um, processes of genetic uh, engineering, where we've actually been able to splice um, different genes into um, bacterial DNA and, and been able to produce um, or, or allow the expression of different types of genes to produce things like human insulin. Around the outside of the cell can be a little hair-like projections called cilia uh, or pili or even um, tail-like uh, uh, structures called flagella. And you can see there's a bacteria flagellum on this particular cell and also some pili. We wouldn't always get everything, um, but we're trying to show a generalized cell here. So this is just trying to show a bit of uh, the generalized way that the cell might appear. This is in a particular organism. This is a stylized diagram. One of the things that you will need to do in biology is to get into the habit of doing some biological drawing, some simple diagrams uh, that don't have to be three-dimensional, but that are really just trying to convey the key information, the key structures, always labeled structures that tell you what it is that you're looking at. If we briefly contrast this with a eukaryotic cell, these are the most diverse types of cells. You can see straight away when you start looking at this, there's a greater level of organization in this cell. It still has things like ribosomes. It still has a plasma membrane around the outside of the structure. And it also has uh, things like the cytoplasm that's sitting um, within the cell. But you can see, uh, in addition to these structures that we looked at from earlier, we also have a lot of other structures that are present as well. We have Golgi bodies, we have endoplasmic reticulum, both of the rough and the smooth type. We have the nucleus itself, and of course this is a very important structure. It's a membrane-bound structure and it contains the DNA. Uh, and you can see uh, other structures like um, mitochondria. And this, of course, is the place where energy production occurs in the mitochondria. Um, just like we had um, for the prokaryotic cell, we will also have things like ribosomes because some cellular processes are common. Um, the, the need for energy for all cells is common to all cells. And so some of these structures will be... Um, uh, common to all sorts of different cells. And this is why when we started to look at biology, the key to biology is structure and function. 
And as we go through our study, we want to make sure that we keep these two things in mind all the time so that we can continue to draw the parallel between the structures that we see and the functions of those structures. And that sometimes will tell us whether or not they're likely to be present in other types of cells or organisms uh, or whether they are particular to a certain type or a certain group. So this has just been a bit of an introduction. Hopefully you'll get the opportunity in class to look at a few different types and examples of these and also to start the process of biological drawing. But we'll look at that in a little bit detail in a little bit more detail in a future video. Thanks for watching.